In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about parent functions. At the beginning of college algebra, we have six main functions that we want to talk about. We're going to identify their domain, the range, their key points, so that later on, in just a few videos, we can take these shapes and we can move them around, maybe do some reflections, and it won't be that difficult. So let's get started with the identity function. The identity function is f of x equals x. And what you're going to notice with the identity function and anything that is labeled the identity is that what you plug in is exactly what you get out. Now for most of these, we create a t-table of values to get an idea about the shape. And then we just kind of keep on going until we really know what the shape is, the key points, the key attributes. So I said the identity function, what you plug in is what you get out. And think about this, you plug in negative 2, you're not doing anything to the x, so you get negative 2. You plug in negative 1, you get negative 1, and so on. So, we plot these points, negative 2, negative 1, or negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. If you kept on going, 3 would give you 3, 4 gives you 4, and so on. So we can just build this guy. Now, we really shouldn't be surprised at this. We see that f of x is equal to x, that's x to the first. That means it's linear, which means its shape should be a line. And we've already had a discussion about lines. We know about the slope, and you can see that the coefficient of x is 1. So that matches up very nicely with this line with a slope of 1. All right. So let's talk about the domain and range. We mentioned before that the domain should be all real numbers for pretty much everything we see, unless you run across two things right now. Uh, that would be fractions and square roots. We don't have a fraction, we don't have a square root, so the domain here should be all real numbers. And what about the range? Let's see, you notice here the range goes all the way down, it goes all the way up, so the range is also going to be all real numbers. So this is the identity function. Now, not everything we graph is going to be a line. Sad to say, we're getting into the section of this course where we have non-linear functions, starting with this most famous guy, the squaring function. So the squaring function does exactly what you would expect. It's going to take every input value and it's going to square it. So if I start with those key values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I plug these in and I square them. If I square negative 2, I get positive 4. I square negative 1, I get 1, then 0, 1 and 4. So we just pick some values to see if we can get an idea about the shape. Let's see, negative 2, 4 is right here. Negative 1, 1 is right here. Just those two points alone, you might think it's linear. But then you start plotting the rest of these points and realize this is anything but linear. Well, let's see if we plug in 3. Maybe we can get another point. 3 squared is 9, and so that gives me that point right there. Well, the same thing would happen if I plugged in negative 3. And so you have this very special shape that has a lot of usefulness to us. This shape is called a parabola. Please do not call it parabola because that is incredibly wrong. It is a parabola. All right. So some key points here to note is that right here where it hits that origin, this is called the vertex. And you'll also notice there is this line of symmetry that cuts right through the middle of this. And so this is what we call an axis of symmetry. Now later on this semester, the squaring function this, this quadratic function is going to have its, its own section. All right. So the thing about understanding these key points is that later on, like I said, we're going to take these graphs and we're going to move them around. So I want to be able to pick up this guy and move him to another location, and I'm going to be plotting these points relative to that new location. All right, so before we go on, let's make sure we identify the domain and range. So the domain is going to be the set of x values that I can plug into this. This guy is going left, he's going right, there are no fractions, there are no radicals, so this should be all real numbers, right? 
meaning that it doesn't matter what value you think of, you can plug that into this function and get something that's real. So the domain is all real numbers. It goes all the way left, all the way right. Your range is not all real numbers because the lowest the graph gets is zero. So it's bracket zero, and he goes all the way up without stopping on both sides to infinity. Okay, so that is just a quick run through of the identity function and the squaring function, and let's see what other shapes we come across.